Well, this is a really special place. I'm on the cliffs at Crackington Haven and we come here pretty much every day because I fly Duchess and my other falcons here for exercise. And we've spent many hours watching the wild peregrines and really it's the setting for my story, Spirit, the fastest bird in the world. On a perfect morning, the sun rose over the beautiful Cornish cliffs. Every bird and animal started their day as they had done for thousands of years. The foxes and badgers returned to the safety of their dens and sets. The rabbits returned to the safety of the warrens. And the owl snuggled in the hollow of an old tree. The night shift gave way to the creatures of the light. The morning chorus rang out across the land and every bird sang out with joy in their heart for the chance of another day of life on our beautiful earth. As the sun drifted westward, it illuminated the tranquil ocean and turquoise rays dappled the slate gray rocks and pebbles while seaweed swayed in the shallow waters of the gentle tide. The peerless blue sky which stretched on for an eternity was interrupted by a sharp black silhouette cutting its way through the clear air. With wings swept backwards, Spirit, the peregrine falcon, could be seen falling from the heavens like a teardrop. Every bird darted for the safety of the trees and bushes and held its breath, for they all knew that Spirit was the swiftest and most deadly hunter of all. But the other birds had no need to fear her today. Spirit was only surveying her domain on this glorious morning. She loved to fly, she loved her freedom, and she loved her life. When she was a young princess, she learned the most valuable lessons of all from her parents. She learned to accept nature, value the preciousness of time, and to accept that everything has its own rightful place as part of a collective consciousness that is eternal. Before she could become queen, she needed to learn and understand this truth. As a sign of her maturity, her once dark brown wing feathers and speckled breast had been replaced by a slate blue back and salmon pink front. Her pale throat and chest were now decorated with miniature black diamonds which gradually morphed into hearts and then delta shapes as they became closer to her bright yellow talons. Her large dark eyes were kind and wise. She had been chosen by almighty forces to be empress. She spent many hours resting on the high sea cliff and preening in the sun. This allowed her the time to think deeply and contemplate her own existence. While the other birds flocked together and squabbled over food, spirit rested her mind and found inner peace and contentment. The rooks and crows made their raucous din while jostling for position in the flock. They fought over food and argued over everything, while all the while seeking approval from the rest of the parliament for their right to be dominant. Their feathers were black and ragged after many confrontations with others. Why should it be that Spirit the Falcon occasionally eats one of us? asked the young rook to its elder. Is it because of the colour of our feathers? 
the older rook had no reply. He just continued to squabble and squawk with the rest of the flock. The answer was, of course, no. Spirit is not interested in the colour of any feathers. She is wise enough to know that colour is unimportant. She is blind to such trivial differences. A flock of wood pigeons descended onto a crop of barley to feed. They nervously filled their crops as quickly as possible, while keeping an eye out for any approaching danger. They rose as one and scattered at the slightest sign of any disturbance. When they settled again, one young pigeon asked its elder, Why would Spirit the Falcon occasionally eat one of us? Is it because we choose to eat grain rather than meat? The older wood pigeon had no reply. He just continued to eat his fill. The answer was, of course, no. Spirit is not interested in what others choose to eat. That's for them to decide. A nearby group of mallard ducks were nibbling grass by a pond. Suddenly, one of the ducks spotted Spirit as she flew overhead. He sounded his alarm call and all of the ducks immediately jumped into the pond and hid among the reed bed. The females were difficult to see as they huddled among the cover because their drab brown feathers gave them the perfect camouflage. But the brightly coloured males were easy to spot. Why would it be that Spirit occasionally eats one of us? asked a young male duck to an older drake. Is it because we are male? The older drake had no reply. He just plunged his head under the water and hoped for the best. Of course, the answer was no. Spirit is not interested in whether you're male or female. It's of no consequence to her, and she would give not a second thought to such unimportant things. All of the other birds wished that they could fly as fast as Spirit, because they would be able to outfly her. But the falcon is the fastest bird in the world for good reason. Spirit was not only faster than all the other birds, but she was also able to accept her own nature. She knew that every living thing is just as valuable as every other, and that they all play an important part in the balance of nature. One cannot survive without the other, and all are precious. This is why Spirit was way ahead of all the birds in her kingdom, and why Spirit truly is the fastest bird in the world. Mm -hmm.